Hey everybody, welcome to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and visionrecordingstudios.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take Cubase Session. This happens to be Cubase 8 Pro and do two things. We're going to export our stems if you wanted to send another musician or another engineer, or if you're one of my clients working with Vision Recording Studios to send me the WAV files out of your Cubase Session so I can import them into a DAW to mix and, and or master your project. And then I'm also going to show you how to actually send the entire recording session, the Cubase session, along with all the audio files to send as well, all via Dropbox. So this process is something that I've done with my clients. I've come up with my own little process. There's many ways to do what I'm going to show you, but this is one way that seems to work for me and for my clients. Makes it easy, simple, no fuss, no muss, and everything works out just fine. So if you're one of my clients and you're watching this, please follow these steps. If you're not one of my clients and you just happen to stumble upon this on YouTube, use this uh, as you will. So anyway, here's our Cubase 8 Pro session. And again, this process will apply to uh, versions of Cubase before it, Cubase 5, 6, 7, and also Cubase 8. So the first thing we're going to do, if you're looking at your recording session here, is the very first thing I want to do before you prepare it is I want you to save a copy of it, make a duplicate, so we can retain the original version of your recording session and everything that we're going to do to this session doesn't affect the original recording. So with your session open, come on up to File, and we are going to go um, Backup Project. Okay, It's going to ask you where would you like to back it up. I would advise you to put it on your desktop create a new folder and let's call this naming scheme what i'd like you to do is name it as the artist name underscore the song title underscore the bpm or beats per minute tempo uh, of the session so it'll look something like this okay artist name underscore whatever your song title is underscore the tempo Hit create and that's our folder. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit okay. And then it's gonna ask us our backup project options. We wanna, what's the name of the project? You can name it. Again, I would name it the, the artist name, um, song title BPM. Okay, we want to keep the current project active, meaning that when you save this, you want to keep it active. Do you want to close it? You can close it. You can uncheck that. We're not backing up any videos, so you can uncheck that. Um, it's asking you if you'd like to remove the unused files, which is something we're going to show. I'm going to show you uh, later on when we in, in this video. So for now, leave this unchecked, um, and then go ahead and just hit OK. And what it's going to do, it's going to make a copy of all the audio files and the recording session into that backup folder. So it's gonna make a, a duplicate of what we have right in front of us. And as you can see, it opened it. So what happens in Cubase, when you do this backup, it will close the original, it'll open up the backup project, which is Cubase Pro Project here, artist name, song title, 120 BPM, you can see that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this. I wanna show you where it is on the desktop. So here is the folder on the desktop that we created. In that folder, you should have the Cubase session file, the CPR file here. You should have an audio file with all the WAV files, which is all the audio that's in your session. And you'll also have an images file, okay? So now that we have this, let's open up your duplicate from this folder. Again, when we did the copy process, you saw that it automatically opened it, but I wanted to close it down and just show you where the folder was so you can see that it is on the desktop where you created it. So now let's open up that session. So now remember when it loads up, it is going to be a duplicate of your original session. So your original session is now closed and any modifications we do to this will not affect that original session. That's why I have you making a copy. Okay, so here's our recording session. Here's the copy. Okay, so now the first thing I want you to do is I want you to open up your mixer and you can do that with either the letter Q or you can come up to window and choose mixer open up your mixer. And what I'd like you to do is I want to make sure that all of our faders are at zero dB. So what we're going to do is I believe it's the all key. Okay, you hold down your command key if you're on a Mac or your Windows key if you're on a PC and you just click the fader and bring everything to zero dB. Again, we want everything at unity. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and do that. Levels all, all at zero. 
Do the same thing with your pans. Let's make sure that everything is panned to the center again. You can hold down your that same key, which is your Command key or your Apple key if you're on a Mac or your Windows key if you're on a PC. And let's just put all of the all of the pans to the center. Okay, so if you were doing kind of a rough mix and messing around with this and now you're sending this to me, put everything in the center, okay? Then after that, we want to close this. So we'll hit the letter Q is the hotkey and we'll go back here and we want to make sure by looking at all your tracks that all your tracks are named appropriately. In this session it is, this happens to be one of my sessions we're using for this example, but there's nothing worse when a client sends me a, a session that has say 75 tracks in it and they're all named Audio 1, Audio 2, Audio 3, so on and so forth. So do me a favor, make sure that all of your tracks are named accordingly. You know, if you have a folder with drums, you know, kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, that type of stuff. And then also make sure that your events are also, um, you know, named as well. And that everything is, uh, everything is named properly. And these are kick in, kick out, snare up, top, bottom, so on and so forth. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do what we call consolidate tracks or in Cubase, you call it render in place. And what we're going to do, let me show you an example here. If you take a look at this Tom one track, when you have audio that's all been cut up like this, um, you want to in, you want to render it in place so this becomes one big block of audio. And the reason for that is when you send out the recording session to make sure everything lines up and starts at zero on the timeline, everything is synced up properly. You don't want to have it all chopped up like this. You want to go ahead and you want to render it. So what you're going to do is you're going to highlight all these little events. Okay, you are going to um, right click and you're going to scroll down to render in place and then go render setup. You're going to get a dialog box and from here it's going to ask you, do you want it as block events, as separate events or one event? We want it as one event. We don't want a bunch of blocks. We want it as one event. Now there's a, bu a bunch of choices here. If you're working with me and you're working and you're watching this as one of my clients, you want to choose dry, transfer the channel settings. You want everything nice and dry. Okay. You don't want, you don't want the, any of the, um, plugins, uh, effects, uh, rendered onto the track. You want everything dry. Um, you want to make sure that the file settings that you have the right resolution and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit OK. And what's going to happen is it's going to create a track right underneath the Tom track. You can see it here called audio and it is going to go ahead and it's going to render that down to an audio track. You can see it right here. It's called Tom one. Okay. And what it did is it muted the original track. You can see these are all blocked out. These are all muted. So now what you can do, because this is a duplicate track, remember, this is not the original, is you can highlight the, the, um, the original and you can say remove selected track. So now all we have is the audio track, the rendered audio track here. Same thing with, say, Tom 2. If we go ahead and we highlight all of these, right click, render in place, render setup, Again, make sure everything is the same. Hit OK. It is going to go ahead and it's going to render down Tom 2 to an, uh, one single block of audio as opposed to separate events all chopped up. Then you can, and it's going to mute the original. You can right click on this and you can remove selected tracks. So you want to do that for all of your tracks. So I have one block of audio, okay? And then you want to make sure that once that is done, that and we'll do it. I think there's a bunch, we're not going to do a bunch of them here. Um, that you also want to make sure that everything, if you highlight all of your uh tracks here, oops, object selection, highlight all of your tracks. You also want to make sure that everything is starting at the beginning of the timeline, meaning. Everything is at the very beginning at zero. We want no space at the beginning. Okay, so just make sure of that as well. Oops. Sorry about that. Okay, so now that we have all our tracks consolidated, any next thing we want to talk about, I'll close this drum folder for a second so we can see the screen better here. Any MIDI instruments that you have, if you um, have any tracks that have VSTs, software instruments like pianos, bass guitars, uh, drums, whatever, and you have MIDI data, before you send it off to me, if you're one of my clients, unless we've discussed this prior and we agreed that we were going to keep certain MIDI instruments in play, you want to delete, or excuse me, not delete, convert that MIDI 
to an audio track. And the reason for that is if you send me your session that has MIDI data in it and I'm not using or have the same plugin or the same software instrument that you used originally, I'm not going to be able to get the same sounds or even listen to it depending on what it is. So we want to convert all of that to an audio track. And again, we're going to use the render feature. So this is a keyboard track here. If I solo this up quick, you'll, you'll hear it. Okay, it's just a piano. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, and again, it's three separate blocks here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to highlight all of them. We're going to right click. We're going to go render in place, render setup. Same thing as before. And we're going to click OK. And what it's going to do, it's going to render to an audio track. Okay, so it, you do this when you're consolidating things like the Tom tracks that are all cut up. And you also do this when you want to convert MIDI to audio. You render it down to an audio track and it's going to mute the original MIDI track. As you can see here, it's all grayed out and it's muted. So now if I solo this keyboard track, there it is. So now you can highlight this and you can remove the selected tracks and you can take the virtual instrument right off of there and you can relabel this appropriately, you know, keyboards or whatever it is. And now we have audio. So any MIDI data that you have, make sure that you convert it or render it in place to an audio track and then name them accordingly. Okay, the next step is we're going to open up our mixer view again by clicking or hitting the Q on our keyboard. Oops, there we go. And I want you now to remove all of your plugins from all of your tracks, unless we've discussed something uh, uh, other than that. Uh, when we were making arrangements, if you're a client of mine, if we discussed leaving certain plugins on, that's fine. But more times than that, I'm gonna tell you, take all the plugins off. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna start with uh, just uh, highlighting one track here, the first track, holding down our shift key, you can go to the end. You want to make, and all the tracks are going to be highlighted, you want to kick, click the Q link or the quick link button here to group these all together temporarily. And now what you're going to do is you're going to come down to the first track, you're going to go no insert, and it's going to take that whole row off all the tracks, see that? So now if you go down to the next row here, no effect, once you quick link all these together, it's going to allow you to take off lots of plugins very quickly. Um, so this is already a mixed session. So this is probably a bad session to show you this on, but you get the point. Take all the plugins off. We don't want anything on there. Everything should say no effect. Take all the sends off. So your mixer view should have everything panned to the center, all the faders at zero dB and no plugins, unless we've discussed something otherwise, um, if you happen to be working with me. So now you can close that. I'm not going to do every one for this example. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to export the stem. So if you're just sending the WAV files to somebody so they can import them into another DAW, you're going to export what's called the stem. The stem or stem is every one of these tracks, your audio tracks is going to have its own separate audio WAV file. Okay. So the way we're going to do that, and that's not sending the recording session, it's just sending the audio file. So the way we're going to do this is go to file, I'm going to go to export, audio mix down. And now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have um, the channel batch export checked. And then we have to go down to our audio channels and check all, make sure all the tracks that you want to export as an audio file has a check mark next to it. We don't want to send the group channels. We don't want to send the stems or any of the effects channels. We just want the audio channel. So you're going to go down and you're going to click all these tracks. And there's a bunch of them here. And depending on the size of your session will depend on how many of these you have. I'm using a large session here as this, in this example. Okay. And then we're going to decide where we want to put it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click the path. We're going to click the drop down arrow. We're going to go choose the location. We're going to go out to our desktop and we're going to create a, a folder, new folder, and we're going to call this again, um, artist name, song title, and then the BPM and then the word stems after it. So it'll look like this. Okay, that's going to be the name. I'm going to create that folder. Now we're going to save this as, what are we going to save it as? You can leave the song title here for now, whatever your song title is. Okay, and then what we're going to do, um, 
We're going to choose the file format. We're going to make sure it's a WAV file. We're going to make sure insert uh, IXML is, is checked. Everything else can be unchecked. We're going to do our sample rate, make sure our, our bit depth, we want to do 24-bit. Um, you do 48K, 41K, depending on what we're doing here. You want to leave everything else unchecked here. Um, and I believe this is it. Yeah, oh, no, we want to do the naming scheme as well. So what do we want the file to be called? Right now, it's going to default to the name of the song. In this particular case, it's Everybody's Falling Apart Audio, because it's an audio file, Kick In Wave. So that's what it'll look like. If you don't want that whole title there, what you can do is you can, um, in Cubase here, you can eliminate, let's say, the name of the song or the channel type. Um, but honestly, for now, I would leave that the way it is. Just, just leave it, just leave it the way it is. I'll, I will change it if I need to. This way, I know what song it goes to. We know it's an audio file. We know it's the kick in. So you can leave the naming scheme alone. Okay. Make sure everything is checked. Like I said, all the audio channels, or the all the all the channels, and then hit export. Export ranges. Oh, forgot to do my left and right locators. Sorry about that. So now I got to make sure that I have my left. That's right. This is in Cubase. You have to make sure that your left and right locators are at the beginning, at the end of the song. Okay. So it captures the whole range. So you can see how it's highlighted here in a dark blue. Leave a little bit of space at the end. Make sure it's all the way back to the beginning. Now go to export audio mix down. Okay. We've got our naming scheme, wave file, so on and so forth. We're going to go ahead and we're going to say export, and this is what it's going to do. It's going to export every one of the tracks, and depending on how big your session is and the speed of your computer will depend on how long this is going to take. What I'm going to do is pause the video, and I'm going to come back when this is um, completed, and I'll show you how now to um, zip this up and send it to me via Dropbox. So I will be right back in a second. Okay, now that that is finished exporting, you can see we have our dialog box here. You can just hit cancel, and we can minimize this. And if you go out to the desktop here, you will see the stems folder that you created and all our audio files are now in the stem folder. So now if you're going to send these, and you can see the naming scheme, it has the name of the, the song, the audio, what the name of the track was, and then the WAV file, okay? So now if you want to send this via Dropbox, which is what I'm going to show you now, the first thing you want to do is we're going to want to zip this file up or compress it if you're on a Mac. So you're going to highlight the folder, right click, Hit compress if you're on a Mac, zip if you're on a PC, and what that's gonna do is zip up the file. It's gonna take a few seconds here. Okay, and now here is our zip folder. Now this is the file that we're gonna to send to Dropbox. Okay, so real simple to do. Go out to your favorite browser. If you don't know what Dropbox is, go out to your favorite browser and try uh, search for Dropbox. or it's just dropbox.com, okay? And if you don't know what Dropbox is, Dropbox is a file sharing website for larger files. So when you're dealing with recording sessions and WAV files out of audio, they are way too big, the file sizes are way too large for um, email. So you have to do it through some kind of a file sharing website. Dropbox is probably the most popular. Gobbler is another one, but I use Dropbox. Um, I also use Gobbler, but I'm just going to show you through Dropbox. If you don't have an account, you can create a free one. Um, they give you, I think, five gigabytes of space, which is more than enough for the, uh, the Send Me a Recording session along with all its files. However, you can also, if you do lots of file sharing, can get a yearly membership that will give you up to, I think, one terabyte of space for 99 bucks a year as of the recording of this video. So I already have an account, obviously, so I'm just going to sign in here. So once you log in, you're gonna to come to your Dropbox here and your screen will be blank if you have a brand new account. As you can see, I have lots of files here because I share folders and files with clients every day. But yours may be blank, which is fine. First thing you're gonna do is create a folder. So if you go up to these top icons here, you're gonna see new folder, click on that. Okay, and now you wanna give it a name. Let's call it Cubase uh, Session. Or Cubase Stems, okay? And it's going to put it in alphabetical order. I'm going to open up that folder. And now nothing's in there, obviously. We need to upload our files. That zip file that we created, we need to upload it. So you're going to come up here to the icons, click on Upload. Choose Files. 
go out to your desktop or wherever you save that zip file. It should be on your desktop. And here it is. Open it up. And again, depending on the speed of your computer and depending on the um, your internet connection speed, this could take anywhere from 30 seconds to an hour. <laughs> it really depends. Um, here it looks like it's going to finish up in about 10 seconds, so I'll just stay with you here. And I'll show you what you do from here. You're going to email this off to me, which is really simple to do. Okay, it's going to be done here in a second. You can see that it's done, and now the zip file is here. So we're just going to go back to Dropbox here, find our Cubase Stems folder, and we are going to click on Share, and we're going to send the link. And a box is going to pop up where you're going to put the email address in here. If you're working with me and you're one of my clients, you're going to put my email address in here. Um, and then you're going to leave a message if you choose to. Hit send. And that is going to send me a message saying that you have uploaded something to Dropbox and that you're sharing it with me. And I'll be able to click on the link, open it, and download your stems or your WAV files. Okay, so we're going to close out Google for now. And that's how you send the stems via Dropbox. So now if you want to go ahead and you want to also send the actual recording session along with um, the audio, you want to send me the whole Cubase session, if that's what we discussed or if that's the arrangements that we made, um, then this is how you, you, you're going to do it. So you're going to do everything up to this point exactly the same way. The only other thing you're going to do is we're going to go to the pool here. So we're going to go to projects. And we're going to go to the pool. Okay, and we are going to try to get rid of the unused uh, audio in the pool to clean up all this, all the um, audio files that we're not using. So here's all the audio that's in here. And if you just, uh, you can see it by clicking on the triangle. And if you highlight the audio folder and right click, remove unused media. And what that's going to do again, if you had a bunch of say old takes or a bunch of stuff that you're not using in the edit screen now, the files are really not gone when you delete them from the edit screen. They still stay in the pool, but we want to delete those because you don't want to send any unwanted files over to an engineer or to someone else that doesn't need to see them because it creates a, a much larger file for the project. So you want to try to clean it up and tidy it up. So if you um, just say remove unused media, uh, move to trash or remove from the pool. We want to remove it to the trash because remember this is a this is a duplicate So we're going to permanently delete this. This is a duplicate session. This is not your original session So let's just say trash and you can see the list got a lot smaller What it did is it took out all the unused files and now all that's left is what is really being used in the session So we can close out the pool. Okay, and then from there now we can save this Okay, and now we can close this and now we're back on our desktop where we originally, remember the folder we originally created? That when we, when we made the duplicate, this is the, the song file, and then here's the audio files, all the WAV files that are in here. Now what we're going to do, if you want to send the recording session along with the audio, not just the stems, you're going to zip this folder or compress this folder, just like we did with the stems. And again, depending on your session, this is 1.45 gigabytes, as you can see. You can't email that. That's why you have to use a file sharing program like Dropbox because 1.45 gigs is huge. If we didn't clean out the pool and get rid of all the unused files, that could be 3 gigs, 4 gigs, 5 gigs, depending on how many unused files were in your pool. That's why I asked you to, un to clean out the pool. So this is going to take less than a minute. I'll stay with you. And then what you do is when this is zipped, you send this to through Dropbox just like you did with the stems. Okay, so... That's how you send either a stem, just stems, export stems out of Cubase and send them through Dropbox, via Dropbox, and also how you send the entire recording session. As you can see, it's right here. And now you're just going to bring that to Dropbox and email it off to me the same way. So I hope that was helpful. That's how you export stems and send the recording session from Cubase uh, via Dropbox. For more information and tips, tricks, concepts, Around home recording, go over to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, or if you want to visit visionrecordingstudios.com, you can read all about my mixing and mastering services. And until next time, this is Dave, and I will talk to you all soon. Take care.